Hey guys, Miss Ashby here. So as requested, here is your read aloud. Um, and it is called When I Grow Up um, by Sonia Sotomayor. All right. All right, my name is Sonia Sotomayor. I was born in the Bronx, which is part of New York City on June 25th, 1954. My parents, Juan and Cecilia, were born on the island of Puerto Rico, which makes me and my, and my brother Juan New Yorkian. We're New Yorkers and we're Puerto Rican. My parents decided to raise their family in New York, but they had a hard time fitting in at first. In Puerto Rico, everyone speaks Spanish. My father, who I called Poppy, could not speak English very well, and he worked at a factory. My mother, or mommy, worked as a telephone operator. My family didn't have much money. We spoke Spanish at home, and we had different traditions than a lot of kids that I met. Luckily, we had a lot of family in the Bronx. My poppy's mother, my abuelita, lived nearby, and I loved her very much. My many aunts and cousins lived close, too. We gathered almost every Saturday to play dominoes and eat dinner together. Even though we struggled at times, my mommy knew that a good education would help me and my brother succeed in life. So she worked extra long hours to make enough money to send us to a private school with a good reputation. I knew school was important too. I studied hard and earned good grades. When I wasn't studying, I was reading. My favorite books were Nancy Drew series, Mysteries. I began to dream about becoming a detective when I grew up just like Nancy. I imagined my life would be full of adventure. But when I was almost eight years old, I got some bad news. The doctor said I was sick with diabetes. I would have to take a shot of medicine every day. When I turned nine, things got even worse. My poppy died suddenly from heart problems. Things were harder from then on, but I wouldn't let anything stop me. My mommy was strong, just like me. She went back to school so she could get a better job as a nurse. Mommy stayed up late at night studying, and I kept studying hard throughout middle school and high school too. When I wasn't doing homework or reading, I spent time with my friends, went to baseball games and watched television. My favorite show was Perry Mason. It was about a lawyer who helped innocent people. I learned being a lawyer was a little like being a detective. That's when I decided I wanted to be a lawyer when I grew up. But the lawyer wasn't the only one in the courtroom. There was a judge too. The judge made decisions and helped people decide between right and wrong. If I went to college and became a lawyer, maybe one day I could be a judge. First, I needed to do well in high school. At Cardinal Spelman High School, I was elected to the student government. I also worked hard outside of school. I held part-time jobs. I worked at a clothing store. After I got a job at a bakery, and finally the hospital with where my mother worked. I liked student government, but I wanted to become a better public speaker. I joined a club where we made speeches and debated different issues. I became so good that I won a speech contest during my senior year. I imagined it was just like arguing in a courtroom. Later that year, I was chosen to give the validatory address in my graduation, at my graduation. It was my biggest honor. My dream came true when I became a student at Princeton University. Princeton began allowing women into their school only three years earlier so there were still very few women on campus. On top of that, there weren't many Latina or Latino students at Princeton. At first, I felt as though I didn't fit in. I missed my family and friends in the Bronx. Many of the students at Princeton came from families that were much different than mine, and I struggled to make friends. I had worked so hard to get to college, but college was still hard work. I studied a lot, and over time, things got better. To make Princeton feel more like home, I joined a Puerto Rican student group. We worked hard to get Princeton to bring more minority students and professors to the school. I also volunteered at a local hospital where I helped Spanish-speaking patients talk to their doctors and nurses who didn't speak Spanish. 
I fought for what I felt was right. During my senior year, I won the Pine Honor Prize, which was the highest award a student in, in my class could receive. It is given to someone who has shown excellent scholarship, character, and leadership skills. Later that year, I graduated from college with top honors and a degree in history. Achieving my first goal. After achieving my first goal, graduating from college, I went after my second goal. I got into Yale Law School. I became the editor of the Yale Law Journal, which is an important position. I graduated in 1979 and then passed the bar exam, which is a difficult test that all the new lawyers have to take. I was officially a lawyer. My first job as a lawyer was an assistant district attorney in New York City. My job was to prosecute people who had committed crimes. I had to do a lot of research to figure out which laws had been broken. I had to gather evidence, talk to witnesses, and present my case to a judge and jury. Just like in school, I worked long hours preparing for each case. I worked long hours at my day job, but I still made time for the Puerto Rican Legal Dis Defense and Education Fund. I helped educate young Puerto Ricans about what it takes to become a lawyer. And I volunteered with the State of New York Mortgage Agency. We worked to make housing more affordable for all New Yorkers. I was so very busy, but I still made time to help those who needed it. After five years in the district attorney's office, I got a new job working for a small law firm. I liked being a lawyer, but I still wanted to become a judge someday. Being a judge isn't a job you apply for. Instead, judges are chosen or appointed. In 1992, my wish was granted. The President of the United States, George H.W. Bush, asked me to be a judge in a federal court in New York. Of course, I said yes. Being a judge is very different from being a lawyer. I had to listen to both sides, study the law carefully, and decide what is right and fair. Only then would I make a decision. One case that, that came before me involved my favorite sport, baseball. Major League Baseball players and team owners couldn't agree about how much players should be paid. The baseball players went on strike. In 1994, the World Series was even canceled. In March 1995, the case ended up in my courtroom. I decided the team owners weren't acting fairly. My ruling ended the strike and made a lot of baseball fans happy. In 1997, the next president of the United States, Bill Clinton, nominated me to be a judge for the U.S. Courts of Appeals for the Second Circuit. This was an even bigger job than my last one. An appeals court reviews cases that have been decided by a lower court. The appeals court then decides whether the lower court's decision was a fair one. I served on the U.S. Court of Appeals for, for the Second Circuit from 1998 until 2009. That year, I got some exciting news. A spot had opened up for a judge on the Supreme Court of the United States. President Barack Obama wanted me to fill the position. The Supreme Court of the United States, sometimes shortened to SCOTUS, is the country's highest federal court. Only nine justices serve on the Supreme Court and each must be nominated by the president and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. All decisions made by the Supreme Court are final. Being a Supreme Court justice is a great honor and a big responsibility, but I was willing to take on the challenge. On August 8, 2009, I became the first Latina justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. I was only the third female justice to be appointed to the court. Today, I continue to do what I always dreamed of doing, serve the people of the United States as a Supreme Court Justice. And if you guys look closely, there's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We learned about her last week. I overcame many challenges in my life to get to where I am today. 
I worked hard, believed in myself, and fought for what I felt was right. Most important, I never let anything get in the way of my dreams. As I said in my speech, when I became a Supreme Court Justice, I am an ordinary person who has been blessed with extraordinary opportunities and experiences. And that's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it.